So when we talk about the Georgia Bulldogs, they had huge expectations going into the 2020 football season. You talk about a football team that returned damn near all of his defense. Uh, even though the quarterback position was going to be a little bit questionable, we all thought that Jamie Newman, uh, the new transfer from uh, Wake Forest, we all thought he could be the guy. JT Daniels, a transfer USC, and his clearance wasn't really cleared, but a former five-star player that enrolled early at USC, very, very early at the age of 17, so a guy that had a lot of promise. Uh, and then obviously the offensive line, the personnel. Georgia, you know, on paper, according to the twenty, according to the twenty four seven Sports composite, they were the most talented team in the country, even more talented than Alabama, Ohio State, and Clemson. So Georgia had huge expectations going into that twenty twenty season. Uh, you know, even though it was a COVID year and it's an SEC year, an all conference SEC type of schedule for the, for the Georgia Bulldogs, they were expected not only to win the East, but this was probably their time to potentially upset Alabama or upset LSU, whoever was the representative of the West, and potentially go to the college football playoffs and even further beyond that, right? It's Georgia. It's Georgia. Kirby Smart, what he's done all that time, again, all that talent. It's time for them to compete for championships. Obviously, it wasn't. It didn't happen this year. Uh, the Georgia Bulldogs ended up losing a couple of games. Uh, they ended up losing to Alabama, and they got destroyed by the Florida Gators. Uh, you know, obviously a lot went wrong. They had to try to figure out their quarterback situation, which you know Stenson Bennett, or it went, no, I'm sorry, it went with Dwayne Mathis at first. Did not end up. It was horrible. Ended up going horribly. Then they went with Stenson Bennett, more of a Jake Fromm, probably a shorter version of Jake Fromm, more of a game managing type of quarterback. Obviously, it fell apart. The you know the Alabama game came, and fans quickly noticed that yeah, this is not going to be the guy. You know, Kirby Smart, uh, Kirby Smart man had a lot of, had a lot of uh, criticism from Georgia fans. I mean, a lot of criticism for Georgia fans, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, JT Daniels, even though he hadn't been cleared yet, when he was officially cleared, he still went with Stenson Bennett, and it really wasn't until after Georgia was out of playoff contention that that's when he went with JT Daniels more like of, you know what, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's more of a win-win situation. I mean, the season's over for us and we need to, and, and we need, and, and obviously Stenson Ben is not the guy. So we need a guy that can come in here and really shake up everything. Um, not to mention that you brought in Todd Munkin, right? You brought in Todd Munkin, this offensive guru specialist who coached the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had one of the best offenses in the NFL. In the NFL, more of a definitely more of a heavy passing attack offense. Loves to loves to take shots vertically. Use that a lot with James Winston. Uh, you talk about his history with Oklahoma State with Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman. Obviously, that was huge successfully, especially in the vertically in the vertical passing game. So this is a guy that brought in a, a crap ton of spread concepts um, into your team, a guy that can kind of modernize uh, your offense because more Georgia was more of a, of a heavy pro style team, and now you're bringing a now you're bringing a Todd Munkin that's more of that new that new school type of you know pro you know uh, spread concept type of guy uh, that can definitely stretch that that can definitely uh, stretch the uh, stretch the field. So. Stanson Bennett wasn't going to be that guy for you, right? Georgia fans know this. Stanson Bennett wasn't going to be that guy. So that's why JT Daniels was the right guy. And it, and, and again, Kirby Smart, he made that decision. They were undefeated without with, with him. And guess what? JT Daniels was, on, was averaging almost 300 yards a game. You started to see guys like Jermaine Burton start to shine. You saw George Pickens being, you know, definitely become more comfortable with him. Uh, you saw some other playmakers on the outside really step up. Arian Smith and a lot of those guys. So... The out, you know, outside started to step up. You saw the tight end position with Darnell Washington and, and those guys really start to step up. You know, it opened up the run game a little bit more often with Zamir White and Kenny McIntosh and Kendall Milton. Defensively, you felt like the defense was kind of rejuvenated because after that Florida game, you know, you know, the question is, did they kind of lose their luster because of the offense? And it seems like that, you know, with the performance of JT Daniels and with the offense, the defense started to become a little more rejuvenated. They started to get a little more energy. And uh, Georgia played great. Um, they did end up winning, of course, their bowl game. They beat Cincinnati. Obviously, there's some controversy around, you know, Georgia barely beat a, uh, you know, they barely beat a non-Power 5 school. But Cincinnati's not only, a, they're, they're a really, really good team. And obviously, the Georgia Bulldogs got the job done, right? They ended up getting the job done. Going into 2021, however, 
the expectations are going to be huge because even though you're going to lose a lot of defensive personnel, even though they still have a lot of defensive personnel, you, you know, you do lose those key players to the NFL. You do lose the Richard LeCounts and the Monty Rices of the world and Aziz Ojolari's. You lose those key, you do, you, you do lose those key players, especially Aziz Ojolari, who is your best pass rusher, right? And he was definitely not only your best pass rusher, he was probably the best defensive player on the team, your most effective pass rusher. Really, everybody else, I mean, maybe you can look at the interior and look at guys like Jordan Davis and, you know, and, and, and Devontae Wyatt as guys that were those best uh, interior pass rushers. But Aziz Ojalari on the outside, he was it. Again, maybe Nolan Smith, five-star, can step up. Jermaine Johnson's gone, but they got a, but they got a, a lot of talent, especially with this 21-21 recruiting class coming in, that can definitely go out there and help your defense, especially, on the, especially when it comes to uh, those outside linebackers rushing the quarterback. Um, but offensively, it's kind of taking the mantle, right? The last three to four years, it's been the defense. Now the offense is taking the mantle. You now have JT Daniels, a guy that fits comfortably with the Todd Munkin offense that's looking to kind of score a lot more points and definitely take shots down the field a little bit more vertically. You have the receivers on the outside. Uh, you have the receivers and the young talent on the outside. We all know you got the running backs with Kendall Milton and Kenny McIntosh as Amir White returning back. And now I think they return... Four out of the five offensive starters in the offensive line. I could be wrong about that. They probably returned all of them. But they got a lot of experience at that offensive line position, which people thought that even though not a lot of people thought it was going to be a particular weakness, you know, it was not as good as it was in 2019 or even in 2018. With They had the best, you know, they had a top three or top four offensive line undisputed. So 2021 comes. They don't have an all-SEC schedule, but their first game is against the Clemson Tigers. Uh, we'll see if the Georgia Bulldogs can beat them. We'll see if they can even compete against them. I mean, that game, that first game against Clemson is going to kind of be a, is kind of going to tell the direction that the Georgia Bulldogs is heading. Are they heading in the right direction or is it time to kind of make a little bit of a change there? Because again, if they lose that game to Clemson, they can't really afford to lose any more games, especially because their goal is to not only win the East, their goal is, to, their goal is obviously is to win a national title and to really surpass, to, to get past that barrier, which is the Alabama Crimson Tide. But in order for you to do that, you got to get through that first barrier, which is Clemson. That's why I think that is probably the most important game of their schedule, including a lot of their, you know, a lot of people say Florida is the most in game or Auburn, or even if they play against Alabama or whoever the SEC West representative is going to be in the SEC title, that Clemson game is going to tell, tell us what we need to know about how good the Georgia Bulldogs will be during the 2021 season. So I'm excited to see what the Georgia Bulldogs is all about. And uh, again, I'll be back with uh, a spring preview of the Georgia Bulldogs, but man, oh man, oh man, the 20, the 2020 season was definitely a disappointment, but definitely, you know, by the end of the, by the end of their road and they ended up winning their, uh, their new year six bowl game, you can definitely look forward to 2021. It was kind of more of a build up year for the Georgia Bulldogs heading into 2021.